Hello guys, Yulia Bone over here and we continue study the concepts of economics and we are um, continue with chapter four. So in chapter four is going to be a very important chapter in um, in this course. Pretty much from now on your knowledge is going to build on each chapter. So therefore if you don't understand chapter four it's going to be hard to understand chapter five. If you don't know chapter four and five then you know next chapter is going to be more complicated. So I'm going to ask you a question before I'm going to turn to a new slide. Let's suppose you want to go and visit your parents and they live somewhere in Arizona. And let's suppose you want to go there in the month of February. Think about how much money are you going to pay for the airplane ticket? Just, just whatever that number is, just some kind of amount of money. And then think about if you want to visit your parents around Thanksgiving. So you go in and you visit in, uh, you live here in Greenville and you're going to visit your parents during Thanksgiving holidays. How much money are you going to pay for the same airplane ticket? And your answer is going to be much more. My question is why? And probably you're going to answer because of the supply and demand. Demand during the holiday for airplane ticket is actually increasing and therefore the price of the airline ticket is going to increase. So this is what we're going to study in this chapter, market forces of supply and demand. So very important chapter, we're going to talk about what um, factors affect our, um, you know, bias demand for goods and services, why sellers actually, you know, selling um, goods and, you know, what effects that they're going to, su to supply a product on the market. We're going to talk about what is the difference between demand and quantity demanded. We're going to shift the curve. Um, in this chapter, we're going to talk about different types of product equilibrium and new equilibrium on the market and a lot of um, uh, interesting, interesting concepts. So we're going to start definition um, of a market. So market is a group of buyers and sellers of a particular good. And um, markets can take different forms. Markets can be a kind of organized and markets can be less organized. Um, when we're talking about organized markets, we are talking about probably example is going to be market for agricultural products. This is where buyers and sellers, they meet in particular location in order to make the transaction happen. And then when markets are less organized, then buyers and sellers, they don't need to meet in one location. For example, market for ice cream, for ice cream is going to be less organized um, because buyers and sellers, once again, they don't need to meet at the particular location and buyers and sellers um, can be, you know, located in two different parts of the countries, but they're closely connected. Each seller posts the price of the products and buyers are choosing from different products and sellers are trying to appeal to uh, different buyers, even though they're, you know, not in one and the same location. So this is a kind of like technical, you know, difference between organized and um, disorganized market. So competitive market is the market with a lot of buyers and sellers on that market and each one of them have a very negligible impact on the market price. Um, in the competitive market for each buyer we have a lot of sellers and for each seller we have a lot of buyers on the market. So price of the market on the competitive uh, market is not determined by one buyer in, or seller, it's determined by all buyers and sellers on the market. So what does it mean, once again, that buyers and sellers have a negligible impact on the price? Just think about it. if we have several sellers, seller one, seller two, seller three, and seller four of a particular product. Let's suppose all these three sellers, they're selling apples. And one of the sellers decided, oh, you know what? I want to sell my apples at $15.99. Does it mean that this one seller on the competitive market with all the other sellers on the market that we have, does it mean that he's going to dictate the market price? Does it mean that the market price of all the apples on the market is going to become $15.99? And the answer is no, because the other sellers, we have a lot of them of the same or very similar apples. They're going to say, you know what, at $15.99, we know that we're not going to sell um, our apples. We're going to 
have our price at 399 because we know that this is the price that buyers are going to buy our products um, at so this is the example when with numerous or a lot of buyers and sellers on the market one seller cannot dictate the market price of the product so and then if we're talking about perfectly competitive market in the perfectly competitive market we're going to assume that all goods are going to be exactly the same so in our chapter four the study of supply and demand we're going to assume that we are learning in the condition of perfectly competitive markets because it's easier for us to um, do all the analysis so and also in the perfectly competitive market once again we have a lot of buyers and sellers and they cannot influence the price on the market remember the price on the market naturally is going to form between um, uh, interaction of buyers and sellers and therefore buyers and sellers are going to be price takers guys remember there is a monopoly market monopoly remember what is a monopoly this is when we have only one supplier or seller of a particular good particular good so there is only one seller of a particular good on the market so this is going to be monopoly in the monopolistic market seller is going to be price setter price setter because he is the only one who is selling that product so he can charge whatever he wants to charge for that price because there is no competition buyers cannot buy anywhere else but from this one particular seller so this is going to be monopoly so but in the competitive market is because we have a lot of sellers on the market and a lot of buyers so buyers and sellers they're going to be price takers they're going to take the price that naturally formed on the market so moving on to a new definition quantity demanded quantity demanded of a good is the amount of a good that the buyer is willing and able to purchase so this is very important that this is the amount of the good that buyers are willing and able to purchase not that they want to purchase I probably want to purchase 100 units of ice cream but the question is am I able to purchase this many units of ice cream so therefore quantity demanded this is what buyers are willing and able to purchase a lot of things are going to determine our quantity demanded on the market but price of the product is going to be one and the main determinant of the quantity demanded and the relationships between price and quantity demanded are so precise that we put it in the law of demand and the law of demand is saying that when the price of the product is increasing when the price of the product is increasing quantity demanded for the good is going to decrease and vice versa if the price it works the other way if the price of the product is decreasing then quantity demanded for that good is going to increase Guys, this is what I want you to probably write it down and understand that buyers buyers determine buyers determine demand on the market and sellers sellers determine supply on the market please write it down somewhere and know this therefore when we are talking about the law of demand we're going to think from the buyer's point of view you are all buyers on the market you go to the grocery store you buy particular goods and services every day so just think about what would you do if the price of the product is increasing you as a buyer are you buying more or less goods and services and you're going to buy less goods and services so therefore quantity demanded is going to decrease and vice versa let's suppose you go into the store and the price of the product has actually decreased what are you going to do from the buyer's point of view you're going to buy more goods and services so therefore quantity demanded is increasing in this situation guys remember we are discussing this in the situation when all other variables on the market are staying the same other events staying the same on the market just only these two things happening price of the product is increasing and therefore quantity demanded is going to decrease so this is this is where it says that buyers they determine um, the uh, demand on the market and sellers they determine supply on the market so next one 
is we're going to introduce demand schedule. Demand schedule, this is pretty much a table that's showing you the relationships between, you know, the price of the product and quantity demanded. We're going to use this um, supply schedule that is in front of us, and we are building, we're using this table in order to build our demand curve. So let's use this demand schedule and build our demand curve. Guys, I really hope that you're going to take a piece of paper and build this demand curve with me so you will reinforce learning about building the demand curve. So it's not that complicated. The first thing when we're working with the demand curve or building the demand curve, um, what I want you to pay attention is that price is all the time going to be on the vertical line and quantity is all the time going to be in the horizontal line. I'm going to use um, my um, scale for quantity. Let's suppose we're going to do two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and sixteen. That's the quantity and price one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So my price over here. And now using these points, let's build our demand curve. We, we're starting with the first point. When the price of the product is zero, so we're going to be somewhere over here, quantity demanded for lattes are equal to 16. So 16 is somewhere over here. That's our first point of our demand curve. Price increasing to $1, quantity demanded is decreasing. Exactly what the law of demand says. When the price is higher, we're going to buy less of the units. Where is this point on our on our graph? When the price is equal to 1, quantity demanded is 14. When price is increasing to 2, quantity demanded is decreasing to 12. Price is 2, quantity is equal to 12, and we keep going. 3 is 10. 4 is 8. These are my beautiful points, my beautiful lines, and my beautiful handwriting. So 5 is 6. I really hope that everybody know by now that my handwriting have a little bit of that Russian accent, isn't it? And at 4, uh, at the price of 6, we have 4 units. So, so we plot every single point on our demand curve. Not that complicated. Now, if we are connecting all these dots, this is going to be our demand curve. The first thing that we're going to notice about the demand curve that it is a downward sloping line. So our demand curve is a downward sloping line that represents or shows relations between price and quantity demanded. So remember, once again, if you ever have to draw a demand curve, that demand curve have to be a downward sloping line. Guys, pay attention over here to this table. If you're looking at this table, you need to realize this table exactly corresponds with the law of demand. Just think about it. when the price is low, we want to buy a lot of units. Remember, buyers determine demand on the market. Once again, you are a buyer. When the price is increasing, are you going to buy more or less units? You're going to buy less units. Exactly what the table shows. When the price is increasing even higher, what are we going to do? We're going to buy even less units, exactly what this table shows. So therefore, on this table, law of demand precisely represent these relationships between price and quantity demanded. And um, they're building also this beautiful curve over here that is much prettier than mine. Um, so I wanted to build it kind of... Um, on my own so you can see where all the points coming from. And so another definition that we need to know is market demand. Market demand is the horizontal summation of all the individual demands on the market. And to find the quantity demanded at any given price for market demand, what we need to do, we need to add up all the individual. So and in this particular graph or slide, it shows us 
about uh, telling us about market demand. Remember, we said that uh, market demand is a horizontal summation of all the individual demands on the market. So Sam in the previous example was the only buyer of lattes on the market and he was willing to purchase a certain quantities at these prices. Dean, let's suppose his friend, he also likes buying latte, but did you guys notice how at this price he's purchasing different quantities of latte? At price of one, Dean is purchasing different quantity than Sam, than Sam because remember, quantity demanded, this is amount that buyer is willing and able to buy. So Dean is willing and able to buy different quantities at these prices if to compare with Sam. And together, Sam and Dean, they form market demand for latte. In order for us to figure out market demand for latte, we need to horizontally add the quantities of these two people and we're going to figure out market quantity demanded and then if we build in the market demand curve for lattes it's going to look exactly like this so remember once again at price of zero quantity is equal to 24 at price of one quantity is equal to 21 and we keep going we connect the dots i'm going to point again that demand curve is a downward sloping line over here downward sloping line okay so guys i hope you know more about the demand curve i hope you know how to build the demand curve after watching this video we're going to move to the next video and talk about the difference between quantity demanded and demand